Okay, so let's put your math skills to the test and see if you can figure out the answer to this problem. So here is the question. A 75-foot tree casts a shadow of 200 feet. How long is the shadow of a 6-foot tall person standing next to the tree? All right, so this is the problem, but uh, we do have a multiple choice question here. And let's take a look at our answers. So A is 8 feet. B is 13 feet, C is 16 feet, and D is 20 feet. Now, feel free to use a calculator, but uh, if you think you know the answer, put that into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct solution in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. All right, so one more time, a 75-foot tree cast a shadow of 200 feet. How long is the shadow of a 6-foot tall person standing next to this tree? All right, so let's take a look at the solution. The correct answer here is C, which of course is 16 feet. Now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face and an A plus. If you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I didn't really like geometry in school. Well, of course, we're going to be using some geometry here, but we're also going to be using a little bit of algebra. But uh, this is not that difficult. Matter of fact, uh, let's see exactly how to solve this problem right now. And the first thing that we want to kind of review is that anytime you're dealing with any problem, especially a math word problem, I like to kind of use the rule of three. Okay. Now, what is the rule of three? Well, you want to read the problem at least three times before you start doing anything. Okay. Like, you know, read the problem once, be like, okay, this problem has to deal with a shadow, a tree, a person. All right. Just get a sense of it. Read it again. Start getting some details. All right. We've got a, uh, the height of the tree. I know the shadow of the tree. And, oh, I got a six-foot person, and they want to know uh, how long is the shadow of this person standing next to the tree. And the third time, you really get clear about what the question is. Okay, so don't start really trying to engage a solution until you read this thing a few times. And my suggestion is at least three times. Now, when it comes to uh, math word problems, matter of fact, any problem, it's very, very helpful to visualize the problem. That's a little bit of a hint that I kind of um, said in the beginning of this video. So when it comes to, again, math problems, right? Uh, try to come up with some sort of sketch, some sort of model of the that represents the information in the problem. Because oftentimes when we visualize or we can see a visual representation of the, of the, um, the problem, we can see the solution. Okay, you can kind of visualize what to do here. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at the problem, okay, visually. Now, this is the way I'm going to do it. We're certainly talking about, you know, a tree and a shadow. So it's probably a pretty good idea, a pretty good idea to just kind of sketch out a tree. Uh, you know, here is the ground and here is its shadow. Now, we're going we're gonna to have to make some assumptions here. And this is something that it wasn't stated in this problem, okay, and it's something that you're going to have to interpret for those of you that are taking uh, any kind of math class, right? Because a lot of you can say, well, how do I know that this tree isn't going like this direction, right? Maybe the tree is bent. Maybe that kind of storm came through, bent uh, the um, tree, and maybe the ground's not perfectly level. Well, listen, when it comes to math problems, right, go ahead and make the assumption that, uh, yes, this tree will be perfectly straight and perpendicular. In other words, it's going to form a right angle to the ground. We have to kind of simplify the situation, right? And I think, um, you know, you can take liberty by just making those assumptions, uh, especially if you're taking, again, any sort of math course, unless the problem states otherwise, okay? So here we have a tree. It's 75 foot tall, and our sun is way up here shining. It's a beautiful day. And uh, the sun is casting a shadow uh, like so, right? So the shadow of the street is 200 feet. Now, we do have this person here, but this is kind of a star, right? So let's go ahead and continue on and finish up our sketch. So here is the situation. We have this 75-foot tree. It's casting a shadow 200 feet. And then I have this uh, person that's six foot tall standing right next to the tree and we're looking for their shadow. Okay, this is what we don't know. But as I indicated in the beginning of this video, uh, the shadow from this tree, the, the tree's height to its shadow will be in the same proportion 
as a height of this person to uh, their shadow. Okay, so again, this is a proportion problem, and uh, if you were like, well, I'm not sure uh, how to you know solve this. Well, I gave you a big kind of hint. You want to set up a proportion between uh, uh, you know this uh, information right here on this diagram or this little sketch. Okay, so if you think you know what to do, if you were a little bit lost, now you think you know what to do, maybe pause the video and see if you could set up the proportion that would represent uh, finding this unknown value right here. But of course, I'm gonna show you exactly how to do this. This is not that difficult. But um, what we wanna do is be super clear about the information in the problem, okay? Again, we need to simplify. We need to uh, kind of uh, make some assumptions here that the tree is perpendicular to the ground, the ground's perfectly level, and this person is, you know, got like amazing posture, and we'll just represent them, you know, just standing straight up and down, and their shadow is just like this, and so they're perpendicular to the ground as well. Okay, so here is essentially what we're looking for. We have six is to, uh, we have six, which is the height of the person to their shadow, which is X. We don't know what this is. This is what we're looking for, but we do know the height of the tree to its shadow, we have the height of the person. We're looking for the how long their shadow is, okay? And again, this information here, okay, will be in the same proportion because the sun is casting down its lovely rays and whatever's standing, you know, pretty much right next to this tree is going to, their shadow, if it's perpendicular to the ground, is going to be in proportion to other things that are perpendicular out there, okay? All right, so hopefully that makes sense, and I'm going to show you exactly how to set this proportion up and solve it. But before I do that, I'm going to ask you to please subscribe to my channel. And my channel is basically a big classroom, okay? I kind of, uh, you know, like to think of it, here is my lovely classroom, and uh, here it is, here's the door, and you know, I would get all these new students in my classroom, I would be all so excited. The only problem there is that I was limited, right? I was only me in this classroom, and I can only give so many students so much attention uh, at a time. But here on my YouTube channel, I look at it as my virtual classroom. I'm trying to reach people are, that are interested in either relearning math or learning math the first time or just like the topic or struggling in math. My objective is to reach as many people as possible. When you hit that subscribe button, it really does help me. My big thing on my channel is I try to uh, teach math in kind of a clear and understandable way, certainly a non-textbooky type of manner. Uh, so by you doing that, it does help me out. Thank you so much. By the way, if you are new to my channel, you'll find 2,000 plus videos um, from basic math to advanced math uh, and everything in between. So if you're interested in geometry, trigonometry, uh, even some calculus and whatnot, uh, you'll find all that on my channel. Okay, back to the problem. Okay, so here we go. So we now we know that we have the, uh, the tree to its shadow, okay, whatever the, the height of the tree is to the, uh, the length of its shadow will be in the same proportion as the height of the person to the length of their shadow. So we can kind of think of this as the following, okay? The height of whatever to its shadow is in this, is, uh, the same proportion as the height of something else as its shadow. So in other words, right here, the tree, okay, uh, its height to its shadow is the same proportion as the person, okay? So we want to set up a proportion, and a proportion is two equal fractions. And here is something very, very uh, important. Notice I have height to shadow, okay? The height to shadow, not uh, it, this fraction here. Well, let me just, I'm kind of stumbling and bumbling here for a second. Let me just make sure you understand. A proportion is two equal fractions. So this is a fraction. It's equal to another fraction. You'll see this uh, more clearly in a second. But the point I'm trying to make here is that we want to set up uh, uh, this uh, proportion, these two fractions, but the numerator and denominators, the units of measure, must be the same. In other words, if I'm going to compare the height to the shadow over here, and when I'm setting up a portion, I have to have the height in the numerator and a shadow down here in the denominator. In other words, it can't be height to shadow and shadow to height. It's got to be height, height over shadow, height over shadow, or you could have it shadow to height and shadow to height. You could set it up that way as well, as long as the same uh, 
uh, what you're measuring is in the same position. Okay, that's very important. And I bring it up because a lot of students, when they're setting up proportions, confuse this, and then they get the problem wrong, and then they're very sad, and they're like, I should have listened to that guy on YouTube. I could have aced my test. All right, so if you understand uh, you know, everything I'm saying here, then let's see if you can set up this proportion. And if you can set up this proportion, solving it is not that difficult. All right, so here we go. So we're going to set up this proportion. We're going to compare the height and shadow of the person, uh, the person to their shadow, to the tree, to, to its shadow. And when we do that, we have 6 over x, okay, and that's going to be equal to 75 over 200. All right, so this is the proportion that we need to solve. And when we solve for x, we will have solved the problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that now. And again, we are dealing with the proportion, okay, which is two equal fractions. In other words, it's a, this fraction here is equal to this fraction here. But uh, let's look at two equal fractions just to make sure you understand uh, the kind of way we uh, solve proportion problems. So if I have a fraction one half, a fraction that's clearly equal to one half is like five over 10, right? Well, one thing that you need to know about proportions, when you see, oh, where I'm dealing with proportion or two equal fractions, or a fraction, an equal sign or a fraction, you got to think about the cross product. Okay, and this is an illustration of the cross product. You cross multiply. This is a property of proportions. In other words, five times two, okay, uh, or two times five right here is going to be equal to one times 10. All right, 10 is equal to 10. So the cross product is always true when you have a proportion, and that is how you solve proportions. Okay, so let's go and apply this knowledge now. So we have 6 over x is equal to 75 over uh, 200. This is our proportion we need to solve. We're going to apply that cross product. Not that difficult. So 75 times x is 75x. 6 times 200 is right here. We'll simplify uh, 6 times 200. Of course, that's 1,200. All right, now to solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 75. And we'll get 1,200 divided by 75, which is 16 or 16 what? Well, um, x was the length of the shadow, right? And everything is in feet, all right? The 75 feet for the tree, its shadow was uh, 200 feet, and the person is uh, six foot tall. So x will be uh, the unit of measure is in feet, so 16 feet. Okay, so hopefully... Most of you kind of figured this out in this particular way, but let's suppose you didn't, uh, you know, do the, you know, set up a proportion to solve this. I did say that you could solve, you know, use common sense, right? So if you were able to at least visualize this, maybe some of you said, oh, I'll take 200, I'll divide it by 75, and then whatever that decimal is, maybe I'll multiply it by uh, six. You know, you kind of like toy around with the problem to come up with an answer that seems reasonable, right? So once you would have your answer, Okay, let's say you've got 16, and you took 16 and you divided by 6, and then you took 200 and you divided by 75, and it was like the same, that might kind of give you a sense. Even if you didn't know what the word proportion was, you'd be like, yeah, I think that's right. So I guess the main point of uh, you know what I'm trying to say here, outside of like, hey, you need to understand proportion problems, is that don't give up easily on a math problem, okay? Like, give yourself uh, credit for trying. Okay, it's almost like maybe, you know, maybe working out in the gym or something like that. Once you first start working out, you're like, oh, this is terrible. I'm not going to do this. But maybe after 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, you start getting into the flow of things. Same thing with trying to solve a math word problem. Maybe in the beginning, it's tough, it's confusing. Uh, but as, you know, you keep trying, you start seeing new paths, uh, new kind of ways you can look at the problem or new kind of ideas. Oh, maybe I can solve this. So, you know, that's a big thing when it comes to mathematics is that if you want to be successful, you cannot give up uh, too easily, okay? Sometimes it does take a good amount of effort to solve a math problem. Okay, so I hope this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, if you need additional help in geometry, check out these courses right here. So in my pre-algebra course, I have a couple of chapters on basic geometry. But uh, if you have to understand all things geometry to include uh, proofs, then you got to check out my full geometry course. Now, if you want a good math review of basic math, algebra, and geometry, then check out my math skills rebuilder course. 
All right, so I'm gonna leave links to all these courses in the description of this video. And with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.